in. I know you love when I do baking. I know you love it even more when I do quick and easy treats. So today, I am gonna show you how I created five very quick, very easy things that you can do if you're having a Christmas party or you're having your friends round, or you can pick and choose a couple of your favorites to treat yourself on a cold, miserable winter's day. So let's get started. The first treat I'm gonna be chatting you through are some chocolate orange cookies. Now I am using my lovely friend Tanya Burr's recipe, but instead of dime bars, I am adding tiny little Terry's chocolate orange segments, which are flipping delicious. First thing you're gonna wanna do is put 200 grams of unsalted butter at room temperature in a bowl. Next thing you want to add is 300 grams of caster sugar. Sounds like a lot, is a lot. Obviously eat these in moderation. And then using my trusty hand whisk, I'm gonna cream this together until it's really soft and fluffy. Next, you need to crack in one medium sized egg and beat that in. If you don't have a hand whisk, ask for one for Christmas because it honestly is just the best thing. Now it's time to add in all your dry ingredients. So we have 275 grams of self-raising flour and 75 grams of cocoa powder. And then you also want to add a little bit of milk just until you feel like the consistency isn't as dry. And back to whisk. Now all your ingredients are combined and you have cookie dough. It's time to add your chocolate. I like to use Milky Bar. I feel like if you're not the biggest fan of white chocolate, it really doesn't matter in these because it just works. Generally, I don't really eat white chocolate on its own, but in these cookies, it's amazing. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of dairy milk. And then my little segment of Terry's chocolate orange. This is essentially like cholesterol in a bowl. These cookies are not for the faint hearted, okay? That's all I'm saying. Once you've combined everything together on your baking trays lined with some baking sheet, you just want to grab a big old handful. Now I actually do put a lot into one cookie. I'm not too sure if Tam was watching this. She might say I make them too big but I quite like them like this. And just gonna shove a little orange segment in the top of that one. Ooh, that's gonna be a good one. Once you've got them all lined out on your baking tray, depending on the size that you wanna go for, I've gone for quite big, so I've got seven out of that. But if you wanna go smaller, you'll get a couple more. You want to pop them in a preheated oven at 200 degrees Celsius for 10 to 11 minutes. One thing that will confuse you a lot is that they won't look baked. Take them out, it's absolutely fine, and then leave them to set on the side for 30 minutes before tucking into them. The second treat are very easy, very straightforward gingerbread truffles. Now, I absolutely love gingerbread all year round, but I feel like this video would not be a Christmas treats video if I didn't have some gingerbread in it. First thing you are going to want to do is get an entire pack of ginger nut biscuits and using a blender or a processor or something that's going to crush these into very, very fine breadcrumbs, you're gonna want to pop those all in there. This looks like it's sponsored by Nutribullet. It isn't. <laughs> Now that you have a bowl full of very fine gingerbread crumbs, you need to get yourself some cream cheese and using a spoon, you simply want to spoon in a generous dollop. You wanna mix this together until you reach the perfect consistency. So you want it so that as you roll it, it just forms a ball. You don't wanna make it too wet with the cream cheese, so you have to be quite careful with this bit. This is really messy and very sticky. Tastes delicious though. You now want to bring together the mixture and make small balls like so. And pop them down on a tray with a baking sheet. 
Feel free to make these any size you want, by the way. I like them kind of generously mouth-sized so that you could pop the whole thing in if you wanted to, if you were feeling daring, uh, or you can bite it in half and then you've got more in one. Now you want to pop these in the freezer for 30 minutes just so they go hard. Now that your little cheesecake balls have hardened in the freezer, it is time to dip them in melted white chocolate, which I have just melted. This isn't just something you can buy, unfortunately. We would all love that. So, using a cocktail stick, you want to stick it into your ball as far in as you can go, but don't go too far because then it will come out the other end. And you simply want to twist it in the chocolate making sure to coat every little bit. Once you've coated, just tap it on the side of the bowl and gently spin it just to get off any excess chocolate. And then place it down on the paper. And you have to decorate it now because they've been frozen, the chocolate sets quite quickly. So I'm using some chocolate sprinkles and popping those on top. So I've done four of them with the chocolate sprinkles, but the other remaining four I'm gonna do slightly differently. So I'm gonna do what I did before and coat them in the chocolate. And we're just gonna leave them there. Now with the last four, I am just going to use a squeezy tube of chocolate icing and I'm gonna do some decorating. It's like something from Thornton's. And there you go. That is your completed gingerbread cheesecake truffles. These next treats are Christmas tree brownies, which I saw on Pinterest and I just had to give them a go because they looked amazing. First thing you need to do is preheat your oven to 170 degrees Celsius and grease and line a brownie tin. So I have that ready. Also, I'm using a brownie mix from a box, which I know some people won't wanna do and that's fine if you can find a recipe or you can make really kick-ass brownies, then you can use your own. But because I wanted to make this quite quick and easy, and actually the fun is in the decorating, I'm using trusty Betty Crocker today. So you wanna do the really hard task of emptying the bag into a bowl. Be careful, this could go very wrong. This is where I now open the bag and it goes everywhere and it actually does go wrong. Okay, there we go. Next thing you want to do is add three tablespoons of vegetable oil, five tablespoons of water, and one medium egg. And then all that's left for you to do is mix that together. Then you literally want to pour this into your baking tin. This then needs to go into the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. Once your brownie has completely cooled down, oops, um, you want to take it out of your tin and peel it off. So you want to cut your brownie into Christmas tree shaped triangles. Once you have cut out your triangles from your brownie, it is time to make some very green Christmas tree icing. Now you can, of course, make this from scratch if you want to, but because we're trying to do this really quick and easy, and I've got all my guests arriving very soon, um, I'm going to use some more Betty Crocker vanilla icing. And no, this video is not sponsored by Betty Crocker. So I'm gonna spoon that into a bowl. I'm then gonna add some Americolor electric green. You can get green food coloring. It's probably better to use a gel. I really like these. I got these on eBay just because I feel like the American colors are really actually very vibrant and that's exactly what we want. And then using our trusty food bag, we're gonna spoon the icing in. Twist it for your makeshift pipe bag and then snip off the corner. Now, you can snip off quite a big bit if you want your Christmas tree swirls to be quite wide and take up quite a lot of the brownie or you can trim off a really tiny bit. I'm gonna go for a tiny bit on these ones and then you just want to start at the top and work your way down to the bottom. So now you've done your little Christmas tree wiggles, it's time to decorate. So I have these, some gold and silver and white stars. I'm gonna sprinkle some of these on. Now, this bit is quite fiddly. 
You want some stalks for your Christmas trees, so we're gonna break some mini candy canes where they bend, because we don't need the bend bit, and we're gonna stick it up the bottom of the Christmas tree. And there we go, your Christmas tree brownies. Yay! For this next treat, I'm gonna show you how to make chocolate rice crispy Christmas puddings. These are so cute. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is put 50 grams of unsalted butter into a saucepan and melt on low heat. You need to add 180 grams of marshmallows and continue to stir until the marshmallows have fully melted. Once the marshmallows have fully melted, take them off the heat and add 100 grams of Rice Krispies and mix together. Leave that to the side and then in a bowl over boiling water, you need to melt 200 grams of milk chocolate. Once you have your Rice Krispies and marshmallows and your melted chocolate, you want to combine the two together. All you want to do is simply roll them up into little balls and pop them on a lined baking tin. You just need to pop this in the fridge to chill for 10 minutes. Now that your Rice Krispie balls have cooled down in the fridge, all you need is a freezer bag and some melted white chocolate. And you just want to pour that down into the corner, unless you have a lot of piping bags available, but this is kind of a quick hack. Fold over the bag and just twist it as you would with a piping bag. And then what you're gonna wanna do is just cut a very teeny piece of the corner of the bag. And then because we wanna make these look like little Christmas puddings, you just wanna do a little dollop of white chocolate on the top. And don't worry, it does run down the sides, but that's what you want it to do. So it doesn't need to be neat, and the chocolate does set quite quickly. For pieces of holly, I'm just using little tiny green tree sprinkles, and I'm just gonna stick two in side by side. Then for the red berries, I'm gonna use these tiny little red balls that are part of this very festive little pack of sprinkles. And I'm gonna pop two of those on per Christmas pudding. Ta-da! So there you go. Those are your little mini Christmas pudding Rice Krispie balls. You just wanna leave these on the side so that the white chocolate can set, or you can pop them back in the fridge. And for the last treat, we are doing some pretzel wreaths, which is just a really fun, very quick, and very easy way to make pretzels a little bit more delicious. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is melt some white chocolate, or if you prefer, you can use milk chocolate or dark chocolate. Get yourself some salted pretzels, and starting on the curly end, you wanna dip this in your white chocolate, only halfway, and you wanna make this really cute little star effect. Then, going back in with more pretzels, but this time with the pointed end, dip that halfway into the chocolate, and pop that in between two of the pretzels. That is your pretzel wreath. The only thing I'm going to do is to put a little bit of white chocolate just around it, just to make sure it's cementing the pretzels together. Now you have your melted white chocolate that has formed your pretzel wreath. You can decorate it however you like. I have quite the selection of festive sprinkles that I'm gonna go to town. Let's get some of these on. They're so cute. So, there you go, that is how you make pretzel wreaths. You can then tie a little bit of string in them if you wanna hang them like an actual wreath or you just eat them. So I'm gonna pop these in the fridge now to set and then I will get them out later to display for my fake party that I'm not really having even though it looks like I am and I probably should because I'm never gonna eat all this myself. So there we go, this is my table of Christmas treats. I am so happy with every single thing I have made today. I feel like there's something for everybody, but of course, very chocolatey, very sweet, so make sure you're making these within moderation. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure if you create any of these to tag me on Twitter and Instagram so I can see them and let me know what you think. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you again tomorrow. Bye.